As mentioned, my partner Gary and Davis and I did open an organic store in Palm Beach on the Gold Coast way back in uh, September 2005. Now that's almost 10 years ago. Uh, and as mentioned, we now have nine stores uh, in southeast Queensland and by the end of this year we will have 11. Uh, you know, our stores are a one-stop certified organic grocery store where we offer meat, dairy, bread, milk, grocery and a huge range of certified organic Australian fruit and veg. A Ray Organic store is where families shop for their everyday items. So unlike so many health food and uh, organic stores, the focus in a Ray Organic store is not on pills and supplements. We like to leave this to the hands of the doctors and health professionals to administer. We are organic grocers. As mentioned also, we have organic cafes in our offering and, uh, and in those cafes, everything's certified organic, the milk, the bread, the eggs, the fruit and veg, everything. What is a certified organic retailer? Well, we're a member of Australian Organic. Um, as you can see, that's the certification you would have noticed earlier. It's, um, it's, it's the parent company of Australian Certified Organic, or ACO. Uh, Australian Certified Organic is an Australian government approved certification mark. Products wearing the ACO BUD logo must follow requirements set out by the Australian Certified Organic Standard, which is about a 100 page document. Now there are six certifiers in Australia, ACO is one of them, and there's uh, over 400 throughout the world. So how does organic certification work for a retailer? Well each year an independent auditor visits our stores and cafes and audits our shop to see that we are indeed offering certified, certified organic products. These same auditors visit growers, processors and distributors to check that, they, that when they, the product says it is certified organic, it indeed is. So, you know, once the word natural was used to sell a product, uh, but of course um, now the buzzword is organic. I mean, anyone can say that a product is organic. There is many a farmer's market that you'd visit where the stand holder will be promoting the produce as organic, but you know, the only true, true guarantee is if the farm is certified organic. So next time you visit that farmer's market and you're asking if the product's organic, check also if it's certified organic. Uh, that's, you know, why we decided to become a certified organic retailer and cafe. It's our guarantee to our customers that when we say it's organic, it is. Now, what a wonderful business to be involved in. We are in the food business, but we're in the certified organic food business. The food we offer hasn't been treated with methyl bromide. It hasn't been treated to increase shelf life. It hasn't been grown with synthetic pesticides, herbicides, growth hormones and antibiotics, or packaged with any number of preservatives. Our food also contains no genetically modified ingredients because GM is prohibited in a certified organic product. Since Australian legislation doesn't require foods made with genetically modified ingredients to be labelled, if a consumer wants to avoid GM, they choose certified organic. So we are in the business of offering clean, nutritious food to Australian families. Isn't that a good deal? Now, this is our favourite part of the business. Our stores offer, as I said, a huge range of certified organic Australian produce. We deal with our farmers direct, and when you meet with these growers, you know, the first thing they do is get down on the ground and show you their dirt. You know, you're like, oh, okay. So you get down there, and there they are with their dirt. Now, the same thing happened when I visited this farm, the one up in, uh, you can see the photograph at the top there. Now that's a, an apple orchard, Mount Lofty, you would know that area, beautiful part of the world in South Australia. Uh, that's raw gala apples, certified organic farm. Now you see the mulch underneath the trees. As soon as we got to that farm, Graham was there, he lifted up that mulch. Well, there was a world below that mulch. There were grubs and bugs and the soil, I noticed, was really moist and aerated. It was the most extraordinary thing. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting because just down the road was this particular farm, 
which is also raw gala apples, a non-organic farm. Now, the ground was hard. I actually felt very sorry for that tree. I thought, my goodness, how does it produce apples? And you can see the patches on the ground was moss growing. So, you know, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that this ground was so hard in comparison to the beautiful moist soil in the certified organic farm, which was right next door. So balance in the soil equals balance in the plant. And the farmer will say it's all about getting the soil right, you know, and they'll, and they'll say healthy soil equals healthy plants equals healthy animals equals healthy us. As a supplier of produce to the community, we deal with farming and, of course, all its challenges. For example, we currently have no lemons on our shelves. Early February, our certified organic lemon supplier in the Mildura uh, region lost his crop. The lemons just dropped to the ground, 20 tonnes of them, because of the terrible heat that we had earlier in the year. You might have lemons grow in your backyard and think, hey, I've got a tree full of lemons. We don't spray them. Why don't you buy those? Well, you see, the first thing we'll ask is, are they certified organic? You'll answer, well, no, they're not certified organic, but we don't spray them. Well, no, we can't accept them, you see. No offence to your lovely backyard lemons, but we need a system whereby someone is checking, an independent auditor is checking. We don't know where this lemon tree is located, and we don't know the state of the soil it's growing in. So we have no lemons in our on our shelves, which for a retailer is challenging because firstly, not only do you appear unprofessional, I'm in mean a fruit and veg shop with no lemons, but uh, what's more, you also are missing out on a sale. So of course what we do is we substitute. Let's talk about those lemons. Now, at the moment when a customer comes in, we would suggest if they were looking for to make a dressing that night, a salad dressing, we'd say, well, okay, how about grapefruit and lemon? Now, believe it or not, grapefruit juice and lemon, and, and olive oil, sorry, grapefruit juice and olive oil. Grapefruit juice and olive oil is the most extraordinary com combination. It works really well. Or we'd suggest limes or apple cider vinegar. In fact, the other night I had a beautiful piece of um, fish with uh, local fish with um, a salad and I just drizzled olive oil and apple cider vinegar and of course that great combination of apple, apple cider vinegar with, with fish, you know, vinegar and fish was a great combination. So yeah, you know, we do the same in our cafes, the salad dressing in our cafes would usually con contain lemon juice, well at the moment it doesn't. Um, I will say this though, this week we will have lemons back in our store. <laughs> Out of stocks does challenge you to think of outside the boundaries, okay? So often we will discover an amazing alternative. I remember once we had no lettuce. Can you believe that? Because of excessive rain. Now, of course, because we are a certified organic retailer, we will only stock certified organic fruit and veg. So I couldn't just buy in non-organic lettuce. So what did we do? We suggested um, bok choy and pak choy. Now, believe it or not, bok choy and pak choy, raw, with the stalk, is absolutely dish delicious as a salad. And, uh, of course, it has to be certified organic because I find if it's not, the stalk can be very bitter. Uh, now, we now have customers who have never gone back to lettuce. They, uh, they, they will only have um, uh, Asian greens in their salad. So, where am I? We're in season, that's right. What we offer is what's recently been picked and is in season. For example, at the moment, uh, in January, we had the beautiful grapes that were available, um, Aussie grapes, and they're available through to about May uh, for about five months. Once the season finishes, that's it. No more grapes. Apples are picked late January and are available until about November. So by November, on our shelves, there's no apples, no Granny Smiths, no Pink Ladies. No, customers actually start to get used to this, they, and they start to embrace it. They start to look forward to the new season apples and the, and the grapes. You know, they become connected 
with what's going on. So, um, of course, we have to educate our customers, you know, in order for them to understand why we don't have something on the shelf, you know, that in fact it has to be in season and they learn to eat in season. So I suppose that's when we say that we are a market. That's why we call ourselves Ray Organic Market, because we really are. Um, when customers come in, they look around to see what's available that day and what they're going to cook that night. Just like you would if you visited a market in an Italian village. What's available that day is what's in season and just been picked. It's really very simple. One of the first things I think that communicates food quality is appearance. That's with fruit and veg anyway. Um, now size, let's think about size for a moment. Well in the certified organic world, peaches and apples and so forth can be quite small. Um, shape, well here's a certified organic carrot. Not very pretty. Imagine people pick, picking that up and buying it. But can I say, we put those in 2kg bags and they sell really well because once people taste them, that, that, they actually taste as good as the straight carrots, you know? Um, in fact, even better. <laughs> I mean, that's discrimination, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Smell. Well, smell's very important. You know, I don't know whether you've noticed, but fruit and veg doesn't have a smell. Certified organic fruit and veg does. That there is uh, Graham and Fiona Schultz, who are the owners of Forest Orchards. What an amazing farm. Now that tree there, you can see those little, little golf balls on the branch. Are, um, they're actually um, uh, Fuji, Fuji apples. Now, that photograph was taken in November 2014. So you can see that the apples are quite small. Those Fujis, just so you can understand, because you know we've become very, we've become very disconnected with, we've become denatured, haven't we? Well, just so you know, those apples there, that was November. In, at the end of this month, so the end of March, those apples will be picked. They'll be ready, okay? Now, he's going to be picking his Granny Smiths and Pink Ladies in April. So you see different varieties are available at different times of the month. Um, he's picking his Royal Galas right now. So we can't try his apples today because they're still on the tree. Okay? But the apple you are trying is, also, is actually a Royal Gala. And it's from the McMahon Farm. Now, the McMahon farm is located, uh, Mal McMahon and his family, uh, it's located near Stanthorpe in Queensland. Now, anyone who's been to this region uh, knows it's up on the Great Dividing Range and it can get very, very cold. It's not your typical Queensland, you know, hot weather. It, it can snow up there. It's just on the border. It's up on the Great Dividing Range, as I said, and it's uh, just on the border of New South Wales. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Royal Galas obviously love the cold. The McMahon fa family have been farming since, in that region since 1923. And they became a certified organic apple farm 10 years ago. And they also do uh, some small crops like tomatoes and strawberries. So the apple that you're actually eating was picked two weeks ago. You know, it's a wonderful thing about Australia and since I've been in, you know, the food game, been um, like con the fruiterer, I, I just marvel at Australia and the fact that on this island, we have it all. There's not, there would be nowhere else in the world that one country can be picking bananas and pawpaw on the same day as apples are being picked right down in Tasmania, or broccoli in Victoria. That there's such a diverse range of climates here, all protected on an island. And, you know, I think it's very, I think it was so wonderful to hear um, uh, uh, our MP talking this morning, um, and the fact that green is, 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 is the big word, and particularly from overseas, green 
Australia has this image of being green. But there's such an opportunity for us as a country, as an island, to be unique, unique, because we are, you know? And um, for example, with those apples, we get our first apples of the season at the end of January in Stanthorpe. Because that's, it's, even though it's cold, it's warmer than the other apple regions of Australia. And then as the year progresses, we then get our apples from places like um, Victoria and South Australia. And finally, our last apples of the season come from, of course, Tasmania, which is fantastic, okay? So that allows us to purchase apples all throughout that year. But of course, eventually, no apples left. Um, just talking very quickly then about uh, the Australian market, as mentioned, it's true, it is growing. Uh, it's, it's growing every year. Uh, the Australian market report in 2014 revealed the nation's industry is worth 1.72 billion. Uh, it's up 35% from 2012 and growing over 15% as mentioned each year. The report also revealed that retail was valued at 1.38 billion and 69% of shoppers claim to have brought at least one certified organic product, product in the past 12 months. So that's 69%. So I know it's only a, a small base, but there's obviously extremely, uh, there's a lot of room for growth in the industry. And we've certainly experienced that, opening a store every year. Nutrition. One of the first things our customers notice, and this is what I get all the time, they notice when they start eating our certified organic food that they eat less and they have increased energy levels. Now, you wonder, well, why is that possible? You know? And I know myself, when I first started eating it, that's exactly what happened to me. We even get people saying that they lose weight. Now, can I say that um, there have been a number of studies that highlight the, the, the nutrition that's in, in the superior nutrition that exists in certified organic produce. Um, now there's one I'll mention, which was a, a third, $23 million study, which was a four year study, can I say, it was funded by the European Union, and it was conducted by Professor Lafitte, who, um, he found that organic fruit and vegetables contained as much as 40% more antioxidants. The study also revealed that organic fruit and vegetables offered higher levels of beneficial minerals such as iron and zinc. The study also showed that antioxidants in milk from organic herds were up to 90% higher than milk from non-organic herds. So what does define food quality? Well, food is supposed to provide us with the fuel or energy we need to live by. So isn't food quality about the energy it provides? If the food we eat doesn't provide energy, then how can we function? The food is not fulfilling the prime purpose, so we might as well be eating the cardboard box the food is packaged in. My son was running empty. When he became unwell at the age of 16 with chronic fatigue, a wonderful doctor suggested, amongst other things, that I, I provide him with certified organic food. You know, and I'm like, what does he mean by that? So I started buying this food for him to get him well, and uh, of course I started eating it as well and going, wow, I can't believe how well I feel. You know what I mean? It was extraordinary. Now, I will tell you, within six months, he was a different boy. And by 12 months, he was fully recovered. And I've got so many stories like that from our customer base of incredible health turnarounds. So I'll leave you with this thought. If you want the finest performance from your car, let's say it's a Ferrari, would you feed it with the lowest quality fuel? Thank you. <laughs>